So Gojo's dream was realized. He raised a capable group of sorcerers that can rely on each other instead of relying on one person to do everything. He killed the higher-ups, and he paved a way for a new era of Jujutsu society where no one will be alone like he was. From what I have read in the story and what other people are saying, that is basically his dream. So that they don't, no one has to be alone like he was. So, the flaw with this... Was he alone, though? I'm gonna get to that. Alone at the top for being the strongest? I'm I'm gonna get to that. So the flaw is that Gege didn't really show us what was so bad about the society in the first place. In my opinion, the higher-ups were actually pretty smart. They were, yeah, from what we've seen, they were on, yeah, we should not, you know, let this dude live. Because... I can't, like, yeah, like, I can't think of one bad decision that they actually came up with. It's like, it's hard for me to stand behind a change when I don't see the issue in the first place. Like, th- these are the decisions that I remember. The execution of Yuda, the execution of Yuji, and for Yaga to reveal his technique. And I'm not necessarily mad about any of these calls. Like, they were doing what they thought were best, and I don't think they were too crazy for thinking of. Like, Yuda- like the only one, I'll, just real quick, the only one out of those three, Yuda execution would have been bad because we see how Yuda turned out. Yuji was definitely they they should have executed him like no question this all this could have been avoided <laughs> all of this could have been avoided if yuji just got executed obviously you know we like yuji but you know that yes. was a good day they, they were right they were right from the from the point of like we are making the hardest decisions in the world it would have made sense to execute yuji but anyway okay Gege didn't explain the backstory of why the higher ups are really that bad so it's not the higher ups fault that gojo ended up alone Gojo is the one who failed his mission and let Rico die. He's also the one who failed to keep good contact with his genocidal friend. He failed to capture him in front of KFC. He's also the one who isolates himself, even though he still has friends. Like, Shoko's literally like, what do you mean you were alone? I was here the whole time. But you could have talked to me. I just hang out in the morgue and smoke cigarettes. You could have <laughs> talked to me. I have a phone. <laughs> like, she's literally said that. And, like, Yuta ends up being a success, so I give him points for that but right he chose to not properly dispose of ghetto's body he and chose to keep, kenjaku to show up yeah he chose to keep yuji instead of executing him he Nasa got himself is here captured at shibuya he got rid of black whip and the inverted spear of heaven yeah because he, he thought it was too <laughs> <laughs> well, i'm just saying that like go no, yeah all the problems like he's he's created all these problems for himself right and Gojo just feels like a guy who has blamed all his problems on the mean, scummy higher-ups who, from my perspective, have just been doing their job this entire time and have been hanging in there despite having Gojo around. And he just feels like the Homelander to their bot at times. The Homelander if you've to seen the boys, then you know what I mean. <laughs> He's the Homelander to their bot. Like, how am I supposed to believe that the higher-ups were bad when I've never seen them make a bad decision nor do much well, at all for that but matter. But Vought is, is inherently kind of... No, Vought's bad too. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying neither is better than the other. Like, neither is necessarily right or wrong. And we get more backstory on Vought than we do of the higher-ups. It's like you have this overarching company, and then you have the guy who is just is completely more powerful than everyone else from a physical standpoint, but is still choosing to be under that company, be in that company. But he's really a ticking time bomb that could go off at any moment. So that's really why I say he, I compare him to Homelander and the voice. But in chapter 10, I read this yesterday. After Yuji killed himself, Gojo accused the higher-ups of setting up that mission. You know that mission where He found Yuji, the finger? Yeah, the, the, they find the finger bearer curse and Yuji mm-hmm. tells Megami run away. And then Sukuna takes over and then starts fighting Megami. Yeah. Like that one. After that mission, Gojo accused the higher-ups of setting up the mission on purpose so that Yuji would die. Because remember, they wanted him executed anyway. Mm-hmm. And then Ajichi says there was no indication that a special grade would be present at that mission. That still does not change the mind of Gojo. He still blames them, even though Ajichi literally says they had no proof that there was going to be a curse that strong there. Gojo's like, eh, whatever. I would still kill them. I still want to kill them. Like, <laughs> that's literally what he says. And I feel like he just blames all his problems on them and ultimately murders them in the end. And the whole time, they were just doing their jobs. So I want justice for the higher-ups. That's how I feel about <laughs> Gojo in the finale. I feel like the higher-ups just 
got themselves a Homelander, and they did not deserve all that. 